<laughs> good, good evening, everyone. I'll call the meeting to order at 504. Uh, first meeting in 2023. Pretty exciting. We've got a wonderful year ahead of us, and uh, we need to get started. And we'll do that by calling or by appointing a temporary chairperson to call for nominations of board president in 2023. Um, I would nominate um, Chris Officer Silliman to be that temporary chairperson. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, we'll say Mr. Hollister second that. And I will then turn, uh, excuse me, let, uh, may we vote please? Um, I guess I can call it. There we go, you go. <laughs> yeah. um, nominating uh, Fiscal Officer Silliman as temporary chair. Um, Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Approved. Now that I'm the temporary chairperson, I would like to call for nominations for a new board president for the year 2023. As the retiring board president, I would nominate uh, Trustee Moyer to be a uh, new board president 2023. I will second that with the correction that the title is chair. <laughs> what did you say, President? Did I really? Chair, that's what it says. Yeah. Didn't, it wasn't, wasn't it like four years ago the title changed? Yeah. It was old. Oh, for a new board, there it is, for a new board president, isn't it? It's chair. Oh, yeah. Well, no. It, you look at that right there in the, in the minutes. It's it's the, president. Minute. the top line says for trustee board president. <laughs> now you're saying chair is correct. That's correct. Okay. And then it says new president. That's calls for. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah. wait, it's new board chair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Moved and seconded for um, Trustee Moyer as new board chair. Um, Trustee Hollister. Yes. Trustee Moyer. Yes. Trustee Moyer. Yes. Motion approved. Okay. All right. I think I take it over from here. As a new board chair, I would like to call for nominations for a new board vice chair. And I nominate Chris Mutual. I'll second. <laughs> Do you accept? <laughs> Trustee Mutcher has been nominated for board vice chair, seconded by Mr. Hollister. Trustee um, Moore? Yes. Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Sure. Yes. Four. Approved. And Trustee Mutcher, please call. Okay. Everyone has voted and it has been approved. Awesome. All right. So, as new chair, I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of December 19th. I so move. A second. Hearing a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I have one little piece, um, if I may be so bold, but under road, second page, third paragraph, it says Trustee Much. <laughs> this is why I need a proofreader. <laughs> so we're trying to ease you out of being chair and you're just an ordinary person. Yeah, I guess so. He's still vice chair. There's a couple of letters in there. <laughs> and I had a, um, is there any further discussion? I, I have something. Um, let's see. It was under, it was under this, it was gone. <laughs> it was the part about, I'm um, trusting you more, you're talking about the commissioner. Was it maybe in my draft and it has been updated? Do this sounds discussion just needs you to part. Um, is this the entirety of the minutes? No, there's a, there's a third page. Oh. Actually, four pages. Okay, I have the receipt. I just got two. Uh, yeah, I use this. Yeah. 
Let me see if I can print some more out. Maybe they're, Maybe they're still in, the, in the printer. Oh. Would it be easier, preferable for me to email them to everyone and their friends? I normally bring my own um, market. It's uh, very, highly unusual for them, her not to have them for us. This is the first thing I remember. Um. <clears throat> I would certainly appreciate that. I certainly can. And we have worked on procedure as long as she's away. Um, once these are amended, I put them on the website. So once they're amended, you'll send them to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here it comes. Yeah, I don't. I don't need them personally if they just went to the township website. Yeah. As just send them to the township website. So we can get them. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I've been doing, but yeah. didn't know where it was ending up. I think I didn't have a thing. Well, not the, not the website. The, the yeah, yeah. Email. Email. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. So, um, <coughs> it was under old business. The part that says discussion was held on <coughs> OPSB denial of the proposed Kingwood solar project, which the developer will likely appeal. Trustee Moyer noted that Green County Commissioner Rule, while supportive, would prefer townships determine their preferred restrictions. Okay. Um, that's not what I meant to convey, or what I didn't think I conveyed. So I wrote it out. I put Trustee Moyer reported that Green County Commissioner Gould agrees that a resolution by the commission to restrict areas of Miami Township from industrial solar projects at the request of trustees could be reversed by a similar resolution at a later date by the request of trustees. Mr. Gould stated that the current commission is unified in their approach of doing the will of individual townships, providing that there's a public hearing and public input that supports the township's position. So, it you was, can send me that text. I'll make sure it's a number. Okay, I have it in print, but I'll send it to you. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Um, so, any more changes that that everyone would like? I'm hearing none. May we? I can. I concur with the changes. Okay. Awesome. Hearing. Um, may we vote, please? Adoption of the minutes of December 19th, 2022, as amended. Uh, Trustee Moyer. Yes. Trustee Mutu. Yes. Trustee Hollister. Yes. Approved. Okay. All right. Um, I entertain the motion to for the payment of our bills. Do we have other minutes? Oh yes, December. I um, entertain the a motion to adopt the minutes of our special meeting of December twenty eighth. So moved. Um, second. I was not here. I'll second. Um, hearing a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I have none. And I have none. May we vote, please? Uh, Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Warner? Yes. Those were straight. So approved. Awesome. Point. Okay. Um, we, Richard, we had discussed zoning fees. Uh, I would entertain a motion to accept zoning fees for the year 2023 as they were in 2022. Um, I would prefer to discuss that a little bit later in the meeting rather than do. Uh, I think there are a couple of changes that are going to pay my bills. Thanks, Richard. We'll, we'll move that. Okay. 
I entertain the motion to approve the payment of bills. Um, $49,801.14 for the general fund, $8,164.28 fire fund, $31,747.74 cemetery. The total was $49,801. And then okay, got it. Colon, and then the general fund is eight one sixty four. Cemetery eight sixty four dollars and eighty six cents. So glad we didn't spend thirty one thousand on the cemetery this month. <laughs> um, EMS billing three thousand eight hundred forty four dollars and fifty four cents. Road and bridge four thousand seven hundred six dollars and fifty cents. Gas tax one hundred seventy three dollars and twenty two cents. So moved. Second. Um, any further discussion? No. May we vote, please? The move and second to approve payment of bills totaling forty-nine thousand eight hundred and one fourteen. Trustee um, Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. So approved. Uh, could I just comment? It would be easier for me if we went back to the format where each of these. Uh, lines were that there was a separate line for each uh, fund. I know that takes up more space, but that's generally the way it's that it's um, presented on the agenda. It used right. to be at least. Yeah, just in yeah. the last uh, yeah. few months, it's it changed. All right, moving on. Entertain. A motion to es establish a rate for travel outside the township of 65 cents per mile this year, which is. Um, do I hear a motion? I so move. A second. I'll point out that's what the IRS advertises as. I think we're actually there at 0.655. But that's what I thought we were, we were getting 655. Change it to five. Well, whatever. It was fifty-six cents last year. It is now. Point I'm just saying, maybe you were. I had been putting in for for sixty-five point five for all of my mileage. Oh, I didn't even know. Isn't that what it was last year? I don't remember. I thought it was, I thought it was fifty-seven or fifty oh, eight, but no. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I could. Ah, whatever we agreed to. We established gate. <laughs> You guys did increase it like after the we'll pennies. <coughs> as the more than the inflation went up. So yeah. I'm probably thinking I know we started at like fifty six, but yeah, hard to tell what gas price. I move <laughs> adoption of sixty five cents. Second. Here we go, please. Um, motion to establish moving second to establish mileage to travel outside the township at sixty five cents per mile. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Entertain a motion to recommend the following board appointments. Now these may there be maybe more than some of these may be appropriate and there may be others that we might add because right. they change. And the RPC. Um, how do we do this? Um, well, generally, generally, and it's, there's no policy. Generally, the person who's been representing that posi that position says, "I'm happy to continue that," you know, as opposed to having some food fight here. No, I want. No, I want. No, I want. I would be happy. Now that I know what Miami Valley Regional Planning sort of does <laughs> to continue <laughs> serving, I'm just getting up to speed with those guys. I'd love to be a representative on that. And um, Chris, will you be continuing with Green County Regional Planning? Yes, ma'am. Um, and Green Co County Council on Aging, we don't we don't have a rep to that, do we? We weren't doing that. Currently, no, yeah, this must be. Um, Clifton Union Cemetery, Don. I would be glad to continue. And what is this Clifton Union Sexton? That's um, Margaret Ann and Dan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Grinnell Mill Foundation? Doesn't exist anymore. I didn't think it did, but you were two years ago, you were on it. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
done? You expressed interest in continuing on the YSDC? And also, I would like to have um, Corey Van Osdell continue. And she is now president, so that's the likelihood that she's going to continue is almost 100%. Without asking her. I've spoken with her. Okay, cool. And I would I'm, I want to stay with CASP, the Climate Action and Sustainability Plan Group. So do I have a motion to accept? Wait, let's see if we have more. Any others that you can think of? Are we forgetting anybody? I don't think so. I'd like to entertain a motion that we recommend is following board appointments. So moved. Second. And one last question. The Miami Valley Regional, the MVRPC Board of Directors, that's a mm -hmm. separate thing that one would want to, that you maybe used to be on, but mm -hmm. but that's not necessary that we have somebody on the Board of Directors. You have to be elected to or be to on the, the Board of Directors okay. first, okay. and then we would well, we appoint you to be on it. Yeah, I'll try Actually, to. we would not because that's not an appointed position. Okay. We don't have that choice. Got it. You are. You've been appointed already. Right. To the representative organization and your status within it is right. important. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yes. We moved and seconded. Uh, okay, we vote to recommend the board appointments as enumerated. Uh, Trustee Meacher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Myers? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Can I get a motion to establish, uh, entertain a motion to establish our meeting schedule? It has not changed. The first and third Mondays of each month, unless they fall on a holiday, then meetings will be on Wednesdays following the holiday. Special meetings will be posted on the Township's website and Fire Station Bulletin Board. Is that still accurate? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, we have a little, uh, we want to specify the hour. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, distinct from Village Council. At 5 p.m. on the first and third Mondays of each month, which, as Don mentioned, coincides with Village Council, so it's two, two hours earlier. earlier. Um, I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second. Any more discussion? No. Hearing none, no. So may we vote? We move and second to establish the meeting schedule for 2023 as enumerated. Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. All righty. I maintain a motion to set contracts with Green Township, Clifton Union Cemetery, maintenance, and with the Village of Clifton for snow removal and street repairs requested each contract to be negotiated separately and as soon as possible. Can I get a motion? Uh, before we move, shouldn't it say Green Township for Clifton Union Cemetery Maintenance? Instead of a comma? <laughs> well, technically, yes. Let's just have that. Okay. Thank you, Don. Did you second? No, there. Mm -hmm. Have a motion? Mm -hmm. yes. I, well, I, I so moved. Okay, thank you. And I'll second. Okay. Any more discussion? May we vote? Uh, move and second to set contracts with Green Township and with the Village of Clifton as enumerated. Um, Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. Awesome. Okay, I entertain a motion to appoint Colin Al Altman. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. You went one, one ahead. Back up. Motion to Oh, motion to a, Yeah, was this particular to last year? No, it's every year. Every year we have mm -hmm. to do this? Yeah. We've almost done it. Okay, well. You can do it again. We'll do it again. I didn't know <laughs> yesterday, I, I didn't know if last year was an aberration or not. No. Motion, I entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss matters of personnel. So moved. I'll second. You. Bye bye. Okay, we will now return to public session at 5:27. Um, I'd like to. Let's see where I am. Um,
I'd like to entertain a motion to appoint Cullen Altman, Fire Chief, Dennis Powell, Assistant Chief, and any additional full-time or multiple part-time firefighter, EMT, paramedics as needed, and all current volunteers on the roster. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I hear um, motion and a second. Do I have, do you have any discussion? Not I. Okay. So can we vote, please? I have to move and second to appoint the fire personnel as enumerated. Uh, Trustee Richard? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. I entertain a motion to appoint Daniel Guckenauer, road department employee, and Brandon Morris, full-time road department employee. Um, can I have a motion? And any other part-time employees as necessary. And any other part-time employees as necessary. I so move. A second. Any discussion? May I um, clarify Brandon Morris as full-time? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, may we vote, please? I moved and seconded uh, to appoint road department employees as enumerated. I'm sorry, who moved? I did uh, Completely sidetracked. I moved. Thank you. Uh, moved and seconded. Um, Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Mutter? Yes. Trustee Blair? Yes. Motion carried. I entertain a motion to appoint Richard Zop, Zoning Inspector, for the year 2023. I so move. All second. Any discussion? May we vote, please? To move and second it to appoint to Richard Zop, Zoning Inspector, for the year 2023. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Approved? Okay. okay. Next motion I will entertain is to appoint Brian Corey, who has um, he has agreed to uh, another turn on the zoning commission effective January first, twenty three, and ending December thirty first, twenty seven. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, May we vote, please. Moved and seconded to appoint Brian Corey to the zoning commission for the term beginning January one, twenty twenty three, ending. 1231 2027. Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Meyer? Yes. Motion carried. I'd like to entertain a motion to appoint Jeffrey Garrison to Board of Zoning Appeals, who also agreed to do it again this year, um, beginning January 1st, 23, and ending December 31st, 27. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, may we vote, please? We move and second to appoint Jeffrey Garrison to the Board of Zoning Appeals for the term effective January 1, 2023, ending December 31st, 2027. Uh, Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. All right. We entertain a motion to establish the 2023 pay schedule for full time employees at the current rate of 5%. With, with a five with a five percent <laughs> cost of living increase, retroactive to June second, two thousand twenty-three. Oh, yeah, January twenty-second. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't get it for the first six months. I so move. I'll second. Um, any discussion? Does this come as a surprise to you? Were you thinking of certain cost of living? Uh, I think we're all happy for any cost of living. Thank you. Okay. Um, Can I have a question? Please. Is this um, this is for um, the road and the fire, and that's right? There's the, the full time people. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I mean, anyway, it's full time, but all full time employees. Not everybody's full time in the fire department, right, Colin? Yeah, we've always in the past given the Colin also to. Well, they maybe that needs well, to be said here. The current motion reads full time employees. You can make another motion for part time if you choose. Any discussion? Uh, let's vote on this one and then okay. do that. All right. May we vote, please? Yeah, it's been moved and seconded to establish a 2023 pay schedule for full time employees at the current rate of 5% cost of living retroactive to January 2nd, 2023. Trustee Winter? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Motion carried. So 
So I'd like to entertain a motion to establish the 2023 pay scale for part-time employees at the current rate with a 5% cost of living increase retroactive January 22nd. January 2nd. Yeah, Jan January 2nd. 2023. Uh, I so move. Can I second? I second. May we vote, please? Oh, no. It's hearing a motion is second. Do we have a discussion about the 5% increase for no. part time? May we vote, please? We're going to second to establish a 2023 pay schedule for part-time employees at the current rate of 5% cost of living increase retroactive to January 1, uh, January 2nd, January 2nd, 2023. Uh, Trustee Mutter. Yes. Trustee Hollister. Yes. Trustee Moyer. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Motion to establish the following holiday schedule for 2023 as follows. And if you busy bodies would like to check those dates, I, I, I checked them once, I checked them twice. I checked them once. How'd they check out? Exactly the way you, you wrote them. Right, a lot of the national holidays um, fell on Mondays this year. I mean, all about this, the usual ones. Right. I mean, Juneteenth fell on a Monday. Um, did we get a One motion? clarification would be the year. Did it 220, yeah, I changed that to 223. Um, do I have a motion to accept these? I so move. I second. Without going back to last year's minutes, I thought somewhere we flipped and dipped to get the day after Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. Of course, Christmas Eve is the, 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 the Saturday, but the same way that we, you know, celebrate Christmas on Monday. I don't think we were doing that, but I know we were doing the, the Thanksgiving. Was that the was that the Columbus Day Veterans Day? We'll decide Daniel. in each department. I think so. Daniel, <coughs> do you remember we that? Take vet, we worked veterans and we took Columbus for the day after, and then it was. Where we work for as we vet each day, but we always use one for the day after day. Okay. All right. so whichever one sure. you want us to do is. is okay. I just want to make sure that that's still what we inte are intending to do. Okay, no further discussion from me. Um, I have my minutes from last year. I'll finish. And um, I don't have any additions to Christmas. Or, oh, yeah, 24th and 25th. Thanksgiving. I don't know. You want to make any um, adjustment to that? Nope. Okay. We just did. May we go, okay. please? Moved and seconded to establish the holiday schedule for 2023 as enumerated. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Major? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, then we'll have the correspondence. We're done with all that. Um, Renewal. Mm -hmm. We had very little correspondence this time. EPA, there's going to be a hearing on the water quality certification on their big project they have out on Tri Trayvine somewhere. Um, grassroots OTA newsletter and the RPC membership increase again. Um, Xenia City and Green County Administrator wrote a joint letter clarifying a lot of misunderstandings about the dis changes in dispatch service fees. Um, Miami Valley Age Friendly Network Meeting Announcement. Um, this our signed agreement for to, um, agreeing to let Green County take over the fiber optic permit regulation installation. Order of State announced the 2023 Local Government Officials Conference. Um, there's a cemetery plot inquiry. I don't know if you answered that. Um, Dan will take care of that. Um, Miami County Commissioner's Transportation Board catch-up. I opened that. I didn't have the secret code to really open it. I don't know if it's uh, anything we need to talk about. Um, and then Nicole Marvin. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't open it. I'm, I'm sorry. But do you recall the, the cover to that where 
the, the, that person, Kathy, whoever it was, said that the board had found out that one employee received a phishing set of emails that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that yeah. gave up the emails of 2,500 or so employees in, in, in the whole Miami Valley. I missed that. And it says, do not open any, any emails that come, you know, with the, okay. with the, with the, with the thing catch up or else whatever. So don't open it. Well, I tried. <laughs> okay. It asked for a username and password. Yeah. I gave it to college trying. I failed, luckily. Awesome. Okay, so we'll let that so go. Don't, or don't open anything that come from Miami County Commissioner mm -hmm. Transportation Board. Okay, Nicole Marvin and Trustee Correspondence. She's been writing back and forth giving us useful information on utility silver. Mm -hmm. um, and Rory McIntyre query on a green burial. I saw you nicely returned his question. Mm -hmm. And okay, fire. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're supposed to you go. Any further correspondence? <laughs> any, any further correspondence? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Breaking news correspondence. Thank you. Oh, the, the Miami County fishing incident. Oh, that's what it is. Which came in January 3rd, okay. Um, and the, the director's meeting and um, board of directors, and we don't, I don't, we don't have anybody on the board of directors. No. And back on track, you know, the, the new, the, this year's theme on, of the OTA Winter Conference, um, back on track. Mm -hmm. I suppose they're, uh, um, I don't refer what to, we're getting we're getting over COVID. We're back in settled again, and we're live. And the train's back on the track. Okay, January um, pre-registration. You want a good price, and it's January 11th. Thank you, Chris. You're very welcome. So, mental note: Is there any more correspondence? <coughs> All right. Fire department report. Yes. Okay. Uh, since the last meeting of the board, there have been 32 EMS incidents, two of which in our former coverage area of attention, uh, and eight fire incidents, which all happened here. We are on turf. Uh, I gave you a list of our current members, just so you know. Interesting, fun fact. Uh, we have eight volunteers now. So. I noticed all those ads for the fans. Who knew? Yeah. Cool. Apparently not me. Yeah. I mean, one of them is our, you know, physician director. But uh, mm -hmm. well, he doesn't want calls. So at, at times he does yeah. want calls. He's got a couple calls. Right? Is that right there? Oh. Much to oh. the uh, surprise of some of the crews. <laughs> There's a doctor here. <laughs> What's some kind of shape? Yeah. Big Meister has changed from. No, he was a volunteer. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's always been. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, the paid police officer. That has nothing to do with us. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So there's that. Mm -hmm. um, I also gave y'all, y'all, okay, y'all, <laughs> a uh, just a summary of unpaid wages from our friends at the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. um, so just list out who who's getting the the fundage, and um, with just a reminder that we have to pay them out by December seventh, uh, January seventeenth. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk. Yeah, we need to get we need to get the other. And then there's uh, another reporting thing by February something. You have to show them that they've got their money. Um, uh, and just a reminder, we have our, what was the holiday party, there's another New Year day, a New Year party coming up on January 15th, so if you want to come, please just RSVP so I know we have enough food. Um, New Year's Eve, C-Shift was on New Year's Eve, everything went off without a hitch. Um, actually, according to them, the crowd actually left earlier than usual, so everyone was happy. Wait, what about the crowd? They left earlier than usual, so. Even when it was so warm. How was the size of the crowd? Uh, about normal is what uh, Jason told me. In spite of Channel 2 I was not boosting us up. What was the other channel, channel 2 or Channel 7? Barrier questions. Uh, the village didn't have. Oh. Um, here Chief Bird said they were able to rustle up a couple of public works guys for the night. So they, I think they, public works blocked one end of 68 with trucks and then we went there. Okay. I wonder how it is. And we're working on, um, I'm working on a proposal with the village for us jointly to go after Homeland Security funding. 
to buy portable barricades. Not, I mean, truck proof ones. Uh, currently, like, you know, at Street Fair, they use uh, concrete jersey walls, mm -hmm. which are difficult to place, obviously. Mm -hmm. And there are two different manufacturers now that make stuff that's DHS approved and actually will stop up to a small box truck. And you can roll them into place, so mm -hmm. you don't need a crane. And, and the village would store these. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they got a bigger place, so yeah. we're going to keep them across your driveway, <laughs> Chris's driveway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'll let that went well. So anyway, if it's we had eight or people on duty that night, including three volunteers. Uh, staff updates, because the hits keep on coming. So, firefighter EMT Jake Rich uh, has, is leaving us later this month. He took a full-time position with the um, City of Louisville EMS, which is a fantastic opportunity for him. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it's not good for us, but, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Uh, on top of all the other perks they threw at him, they also um, gave him $8,000 relocation. Uh, nice. So, yeah. It's, it's a pretty good deal. And luckily for him also, Louisville EMS is one of the top performing systems in the country. Wow. Wow. And everything. So, so good for him. Yeah. Um, Lieutenant Pauletti had surgery Monday to repair a torn meniscus in his left knee. Uh, he will be off more than likely six to eight weeks. <clears throat> so it's a big hole that we're having to cover. Um, and then uh, our guardian T. Casey Brewer has been out since December 14th on medical leave. He hopes to return later this month. Yeah, he's cleared by his physician, so. Wow. But Captain Harris is back, so that's a good Yeah. <laughs> he's back at work, so that's good. Um, I forgot to put this on here. Uh, I had a conversation with now Vice Chair, uh, future back when he was chair, uh, about supply costs. Um, it looks like we'll be changing a lot of our supply distribution from office Depot, who's the current vendor, to Sandstone. Um, we checked a couple other townships in Montgomery County. Uh, they all use Sam's. The savings on s most items are substantial. And there's, it's not, but, uh, and they deliver. Really do. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. But, um, and we are we do have a Sam's membership, so mm -hmm. we're not to do that. We can do that. So. Um, okay, well, good. I hope that will end up saving us a couple of bucks here. It, it, I was surprised by some of the, the ones that were substantial were very substantial. And the ones that were not, were not. Enough. And then uh, the countdown to retirement, which usually when I say this in the fire station side, you know, there's a confetti gun that goes on. Mm -hmm. um, just FYI, uh, I think I've discussed this with you guys, but I'll be burning off uh, time, a lot of <laughs> leave time. Uh, so I'll be working uh, three days a week through March as possible. So uh, I'm off Thursdays and Fridays, except that one week that's not in there because I have to go to the office or something. So. Will you be covering, or excuse me, will we have someone covering your time off? Uh, Debbie. I mean, it'll be a little so. We don't have a second person. No. Okay. All right. And then after I'm March. Not that I, mean, I like to think I am, but. Uh, <laughs> and then after March. No, no, after March, I've got so much time after March, I'll probably be down to two days a week working. <laughs> uh, the way my, I've got to run some more calculations, but my initial calculations show that uh, April may be two days a week, and then June, July, we'll see. Huh. Um, but a lot of that's going to depend on the pension board, too, and when they actually tell me I'm getting out. But they won't talk to me until early March. Oh, I mean, they'll talk to me, but they won't give me any advice. <laughs> <clears throat> Statutory, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, and that's uh, that's the fire report. So, Chris, you got a number of things. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. That tells I that have something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go for it. Go. Uh, sorry. Months back, you mentioned uh, how much we're paying the county for dispatch. Mm -hmm. You said twenty thousand. Okay. We have been paying about thirteen thousand a year, and their proposed increase was to take us to twenty nine thousand. To twenty nine thousand, and that that's dramatically less than some of the other townships. Yes, Dutch. And remind me why. 
The only thing I can think of, I mean, we've been paying that rate. I mean, it went up, we had an increase, what, six years ago, six, seven years ago, I think? It's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't, I mean, the, the city is in you does the billing, I mean, who does the service, and the county have not raised the rates uh, at all to cover their costs until now. They're looking but, at a different model. But are we lower than Cedarville? No. Oh, God. Okay. No, we pay more than I misunderstood the number of calls. No, not current. I, I don't honestly know what their rates are currently. The proposed ones are based on a call for service, which is what yeah. most dispatch agencies do. And I think the people who, the townships that have police are getting hit hardest. Like Cedarville's getting. Yeah. The city of Cedarville, their, their police dispatch is going up like $100,000. Yeah. Yeah, police. Yeah. So we are really lucky that we. Don't have police man. Okay, and the village I, is lucky that they do their own dispatch. It takes a lot more dispatch time to handle police calls than it does fire maintenance calls, which, and plus, law enforcement officers can initiate calls from the data terminals in their cars, but the dispatcher still has to then manage the call. So it's mm -hmm. uh, the, the list that they, the city provided to us. It's substantial difference between call volume for fire and gas. Um, okay, that, that's so all I wanted to know. The mayor, uh, Chair Moyer had referred to a letter received from the city manager and county administrator clarifying some of the misconceptions. And initially, I mean, people thought that if you weren't ready to shell out 29,000 in our case by January 1st, they were shutting us off, um, which I thought was a little bizarre. but. Um, they have clarified that is not the case, and they're looking at a three-year phase in. Uh, and frankly, the, I mean, it's more money than you know, you'd like to pay, obviously, but it's pretty good savings <laughs> compared to what a lot of places pay. So now I'm not sure how this is affected because I've heard a rumor that uh, Sherwood Creek Township and the city of Bellbrook didn't like the increase and decided to pull out and go back to their own dispatch. So I don't know if that's going to affect the rest of us or. We'll Man, I'll bet that'd be a chunk too. To Though I also heard from another chief who was at a meeting that the result would be actually just a loss of the position of dispatch. Because they, when cool. Sugar Creek and Bellbrook came into Central Dispatch six, seven years ago, part of their contract was that the city would add a dedicated position mm. in the dispatch center just for them. Is there any possibility that the village of Yellow Springs could handle the township dispatch? Uh, there is a possibility. It would Maybe cost that could that be more practical than using the county? I, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I just it just occurred to me that the, there's another. There is another dispatch service. The village would have to invest significantly in dispatch consoles and training for all the dispatchers and software. They, 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 the whole more complicated. Yeah, all process. our dispatchers are certified emergency medical dispatchers. I see. Uh, the village is only working nine to five or something, right? And they're still there twenty four seven. Oh, are they? Um, oh. Okay. But it's also a single dispatcher who would then be handling police fire. So mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's too much. No, as I say, I just, I, it wasn't proposing it. I was just saying, the other thing, is, that, is it a possibility? And you're saying probably not. Yeah, I mean, more than likely not. I mean, the big thing, too, the state a couple of years ago put out a rule that they didn't want, um, you know, all these counties that had multiple 911 centers. And the state said, that's, that's too much. You're, it's too much of a burden on, on funding because the state distributes 911 fees to every PSAP. Um, so they limited it three for primary 911 centers. We have three currently, uh, Fairborn, Zenia, and Beaver Creek. So Yellow Springs doesn't receive 911 calls, they get them transferred. Mm -hmm. um, for us, that would be a lag in time because most of our 911 calls are emergencies, whereas oh, okay. most of Yellow Springs police calls do not come in as they do a lot, you know, all mm -hmm. the things that cops do. They're yeah. unlocking car doors. Right. Yeah, chasing dogs or cows if you're the <laughs> elsewhere they use them. I mean, they do obviously have emergencies as well, but the majority of our calls are actual emergency calls. So. Mm -hmm. I did have another question. Uh, you said Can we one? now <laughs> uh, discontinue service in Bath Township? 
We are no longer serving them. We have the plaque. And, uh, yeah, they presented us a very nice plaque when you were, I don't think you were there. Well, thank you, plaque. I thank you, plaque. Yes, <laughs> yes you were very sincere. Yes, I was not here for them. And they had a nice Facebook post saying thank you. They, they came to our meeting and okay. presented and then they got the heck out. <laughs> so they are no longer our problem for, uh, what, four or five years until they come back for <laughs> or part of our solution. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Mm. Chris, you had some issues. Oh, I forgot. Um, I, I think we've got almost. Let's see. I've been roughing out some of these yeah. questions about our hours worked and hours needed, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But based on my rough mathematics, and it's hard for me to tell whether overtime is how much overtime is is covering regular shifts or covering you know vacations or sick time uh, you know like I was asking you if you're, you're, you're three days a week if those two days would be covered well I now know that your two days a week are not covered but perhaps Jason's or somebody's who's working overnight, if he's not there, right, that might have to be covered from another yeah. person, and that might be overtime. So anyway, you know, it, it's got to be fleshed out a little bit better. But you had said uh, you thought that the estimated time necessary to cover all our shifts for the year is 30,440 hours. My rough estimate, what we put out, including overtime hours, is 32,709 hours. So we're about 2,260 hours over. And so somewhere along the line, I'm hoping to figure out where those 2,200 $2, hours fall in. Because if you add, you know, like everything else, if you add all the benefits to them and the, and the overtime pay, you're potentially roughly at $70,000 to, to cover that amount of hours a year. So something that hopefully we'll be looking at as we go along. Uh, and we certainly can get that. I'm sure now that Denny's back, and he can work the personnel files a lot better than me going through a stack of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can get some of those numbers yeah. a little bit closer, I think. Than yeah, and what we don't to do. The vast majority of the time, we do. You know, when one of us is on vacation or sick time, one of us being Denny, or not, the salary staff, we don't cover that. Mm -hmm. um, we only cover the shifted guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so like. Jason out for six to eight weeks, that's going to be, instead of having three people on his shift, now he just has two. So now we, we have to cover that hole. Right. right. And then Nate was out, same thing for him. Yeah. Uh, and then Jake, we won't cover him because we're just shifting someone yeah. schedule wise. So. Plus, the change that you voted during the special meeting sure. is going to substantially yeah. reduce that. So. But let's just say Jason, who's a uh, Paramedic and is serving as a supervisor for that those shifts that he works in a lot of cases. When he's not there, we're putting somebody in that slot, right? Right. But are we putting them in and paying them overtime, or are we shifting who knows what to where? And it depends on paying them normal time. Most of them we pay normal time mm -hmm. because when I fill the shifts, I try and I look at the time card and see who's at what hour mm -hmm. level. And, Mm -hmm. So with the new 106 hour threshold, that makes life a lot easier to cover. Mm -hmm. um, and the bad, well actually anyone who's going to cover a shift is paid less than he is. So that's, mm -hmm. I mean, he's still getting paid obviously, he's on sick leave. Yeah. Um, so there's, I mean, we're not paying. It's not like someone covers the shift and they get his rate. Mm -hmm. you know, the only one that, you know, Nate or Chris picked it up, mm -hmm. would make more than he does. Mm -hmm. we, we do everything we can to do. But they would just more yeah. than likely pick uh, Nate or Chris. More than likely pick that time up not at an overtime rate. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, that's you know I'm just working through this. Stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I had written down staff health. I'm sorry. You want to no, no, to that? To remind, no, I was going to remind you that you wanted to. Yeah. Um, and, and you told me about Jason's leg and and Cassidy and uh, Casey. Whichever. Casey. Casey. Uh, <laughs> um, anybody else hurting? <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. So. I, think, I think my staff is. 
Besides those two. If the, if the staff's feeling well, how, how's the equipment feeling? Where are we with, with equipment operational? You know, what's not working? You and Danny been off for a while, and everything. Usually, they things break. Yeah. No, actually, I came back with. Um, as far as I know, nothing broken. We have to get Medicaid the older one, Medicaid one in for a power steering check. It's probably a pump or something. Like that. Check meaning it's not working, or it's it's. Uh, it's, it's working, it's but it happy. could be working better. It's not very happy. Uh -huh. it sounds like a dying cow every time you take a turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think we've been there before since the ambulance. We've had such a long time. It's probably been, it's probably been a second power. I'll double check. They told me they checked it, but I'll double check because that would be the easy so <laughs> solution. And that one you can actually access on that stupid van chassis and a lot of the things. Mm -hmm. But that's in an equipment. We've had another bay door break. Uh, so it's right an overhead door came and fixed it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the two electric shoreline shorelines for the in the medic bay for mm -hmm. the two ambulances are dead. Really? Um, I'm not sure what happened because I wasn't in the conversation. Then we talked to the electrician. And we had Triac come in, Triac Electric, and uh, we spent a few hours trying to diagnose what the issue was. And we kept bringing every time we plug into the ambulance, it was a low breaker in the building, which you know, it's not supposed to do. And didn't originally do that. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to replace the two cord wheels. So we're waiting on the rest of those. They're probably fine on them, I would expect. The cord wheels are cost. Yeah. <laughs> As I recall, originally those cord wheels were, well, I thought it was very expensive. Yeah, they're six, yeah. 600 or something. Yeah, right. Like that. That's what's the number. I don't have any guarantee. Uh, These are all like young things that you pay on. Uh, those guarantee times, unfortunately, have. Gone by the wayside. Yeah. You know. yeah, most everything was a year. 30 days. Oh, really? yeah. 30, 30, 30 miles. Don't look at it across. On the bay doors, I think he gave us like three minutes on those things yeah. and then That's skipped good. down. So, uh. Terrible. Uh, <laughs> having viewed place. the poor football player that was, you know, badly injured at the game on Monday night, it got me to thinking are we still using those thumpers? Mm -hmm. Are we? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we still have both. They're the greatest things on sliced bread for us, and uh, they've been under service contract. Mm -hmm. We've just, uh, just had their, uh, their checkups. And how about our uh, various AEDs around town that are now 10 years old or 20 years old or whatever they are? We replaced last year, I think. We had last year the three that we're responsible for. Three. There used to be more, but what are you referring to? ADD. Automatic. 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 External official issues. So we okay. we have three that are um, scattered around town. One That's that are for public access. One at Tom's. Mm -hmm. One at the senior center. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually the middle school. Uh, not the middle school. There's no such thing. The uh, elementary school. I think that's uh, the other one that's ours. We there were two that were at Friends Care. But um, we we are not maintaining them, um, and uh, okay. the high school has one that they received through the grant. So the three that we maintain were replaced, and they have a 15 year life. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Just thought of those things. And you also mentioned you went well, the new medic the new medic status. Oh, hmm. has no status, right? The new medic. I, I will find He just got back from vacation. Yes. He's okay. obviously not ordered anything. <coughs> yeah, but I have. <laughs> no, you can see there's a new ambulance sitting out there. I saw his new car, but I didn't see new ambulance. Is that his um, new electric Subaru? Uh -huh. Self Terra or Self Terra? I didn't even know those existed. I it's hot off the press. Yeah. Is it it's what you? Right. No, no. I'm cheering. Pretty, uh, it's a pretty sweet <laughs> car, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I saw it. I got hell of a trade That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> and then a little little comment on the AEDs. I remember 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there was training for everybody to learn how to use those. And now, obviously, you have to keep training people if you want them to be able to be used. Mm -hmm. it, but the, the fashion is sort of gone by the wayside? We used to do regular classes, and then people stopped coming. Um, and. Um, I mean, AD in Ohio, you can any 
Anyone can use it. Yeah, they use read the instructions. Read the instructions. The, actually, oh, yeah. the new ones tell you. They what tell to you do. what to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. They, they still won't do let you do it if um, it doesn't need to be done. That's I think that's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, okay. they won't let you do it. Yeah, it's smarter than we are a lot of times. Um, and then a lot of the CPR classes now are done online. American Heart uh, moves a lot of that online for pluses or minus. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, sure. We prefer to have people do their initial training in person and then res renew online, but AHA doesn't rule on that. So most people, most of what we do nowadays are skills checks. They do their stuff online, they come in here, we make sure they know what they're doing and, mm -hmm. and take a hundred bucks and off they go. Sure. Well, I just, you know, Which actually I think pretty nice. Guys, okay, so something happens when I'm in Tom's, well, I could remember where it is to get it off the wall yeah. as I'm reading the instructions, but I sure couldn't just do it. Right even though I went through that training many years yeah. ago. And then you figure, you know, there's there's not always someone at Tom's, even an employee that would know how to right. do that. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to know. That's the Yeah, you yeah but the, the, did you have to know to, All to, you have to think where that it's it there? Yeah, and okay. and that part you well, also, the know. dispatchers will tell you. I mean, they, okay. they have in the CAD system that tells them where there are ADs in the township. Okay. Um, so, like, Tom's would be the example. They would say, okay, you know, someone says, oh, Fred's not breathing. Mm -hmm. Okay, look for the AD, grab mm -hmm. it, yep. call people. Okay, okay, so that, that. Okay. So, uh, well, that's reassuring. And then, I mean, we also run into the, the issue sometimes people call, especially businesses or groups, oh, we'd love to have a CPR class, and then we tell them that they actually, you know, actually cost money. And then click. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's only 45 bucks a pop, but, um, and that includes your book, your card for two years of uh, training. And we don't really charge for instruction time. You know, mm -hmm. it's our staff, so. Mm -hmm. But uh, that usually turns people off, because they get very, I've had some people actually yell, well, I paid my taxes, I don't know why you're not giving it to me for free. Well, I'll call the auditor and see how many more. <laughs> so, but, I mean, we still do a ton of skills checks. Uh, so I, I wasn't questioning the, yeah, I think we well, started that. I'm just trying to understand yeah, how it's, it's working these days. Modern days have changed things. Okay. Anything else for the fire department? Um, Dan, Rose, yeah. cemetery, cemetery report? Cemetery report? <laughs> I've got to go do a patient care report. Sure. Thank you. I'll be in my office if you need Okay. Since the last meeting, we've had one burial and one force. We have four burials. So we've not been real active. Um, Which funeral was that? Glenn Forrest. I, I mean, um, the, the traditional? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the old part, actually. Um, our electrician will be starting up there late this week, first of all. Good. Uh, the new service going in. Everything's ready to go now. So. Good. And uh, I didn't have much. I'll have the cemetery to go for you, Margaret. Yeah, thank you. The um, Natural Burial Committee will have their quarterly meeting here on January 9th, and people are actually coming, so that's pretty cool. Anybody else have anything for cemetery? I do. A couple things. Uh, I wanted to report that we have roughly 28 burials in 2022 in Glen Forest, all the different sections. Um, it's not as many as I thought. I thought we'd probably have more with, with some of the newer sections, but they really haven't taken off yet, per se. Um, it's um, traditionally it would run tw around 20 a year. <coughs> Sometimes, On average. yeah, yeah, we had 40 some, last year, so we were higher last yeah. year. Yeah, it's been as low as 16 or 18 in some years, and and then as high as the coast. Uh, Clifton was not very high. It was. Uh, 13. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, didn't. And that's probably about a good year. It's a little low. It's a little. 15 I think roughly. 16, 15 is usually about the average. Mm -hmm. We've had it all in one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very. Yeah. So I thought I'd bring that up. Um, I'd also like to review our cemetery regulations uh, briefly and specifically. I haven't been able to figure out how to do this until the light came on, if there was a light. Um, 
we're going to open the uh, Oak Grove Cemetery for normal burials uh, or normal sales of at least the lots once, you know, this summer we talked about doing it, um, opening it up for, for sales after we get the, the ground the way we want it, etc. And that keeps leading me to think, you know, well, we've got, these are now bundles of cemetery plots for $750 each. And we try, and we we said we'd try and put off selling those until we sold more of the natural burials at the higher rate of fifteen hundred dollars each. Mm -hmm. It just stuck in my craw. I don't know why, but it just didn't seem right to, you know, to hold off on one to push the other. Okay, well, what do you think about this idea? And originally, what was the same idea I'm having? Okay, maybe it is. What do you think? Of, and you tell me, Dan. When we first laid out this cemetery, and we laid out these plots to be 10 feet wide, 20 feet deep, we did it because we didn't want the cemetery, we wanted it to look like a prairie as much as we could, and not just have a lot of open ground where there was a grave and, you know, who knows what, and so it really didn't look like a prairie. This was before we even started the thing. This far into it anyway, you can't tell 90% of the time, you can't tell that there's even been a burial anywhere in there. It just looks like a big prairie with chunks of grass and everything. Which leads me to the thought, why couldn't we sell the, the lots, the 10 by 20 lots, as a two-person lot each? Which would then make the lots effectively $750 each. Because you're putting two people in a $1,500 $1, lot which would then be the same as the plots back in the Oak Grove, same price. Well, we had the same idea, but a different direction as usual. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> always come from, from opposite directions. Um, and I think this has been a lot of discussion among people at Natural Burial Committee. Only we were thinking, who's gonna buy a, a natural, like you, who's gonna buy the prairie Thing when you could get an Oak Grove one for half the price. Right. And that's why we weren't going to sell them. And, and that's why they weren't going to sell their guests. We saying? weren't going to sell them, period. We weren't going to sell the oh, Oak right. Grove Cemetery. Oh, lot. Well, people too, so. Um, so what we, was what we can't figure out, meaning several members of the committee, is why on, why on earth your price is 750 And I know you did it by square footage. It's it, The burial plot is half the size, so you could have the price, but as we visit different cemeteries, it's not about square footage, it's about location. Yeah, location, supply, demand, that sort of thing, sure. I mean, that same... So we were thinking the other way, why not raise the Oak Grove ones to the place of the natural burial? <laughs> yeah. So... Um, yeah, I mean, Calvary Cemetery in Dayton, thing. you know, a plot like the Oak Grove plot would be $3,000. Yeah. Right. Easy. If, if and Kateri, if you want, want to be by the pond, it'd be $10,000. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, okay, but I, yeah, okay. It's Yellow Springs, it's Miami Township, it's not downtown Dayton. But if somebody would pay 1500 for an, a prairie, and then for a, a plot in, 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 the, in the prairie, why would, that, why would we then charge, oh, did I say 750 I meant 1500 mm -hmm. Then why would we charge them 750 to be in the Oak Grove? It, I just, other, other than it being based on square footage, I don't, I don't understand. Well, it, it is half the size. I mean, the that's pretty much, much it. The, in the land, of the original land. Yeah, but that becomes different. That becomes minuscule, doesn't it? I mean, I have a separate question <laughs> on the prairie. If you went from ten to, if you, you know, the ten to twenty, ten by twenty, and make it the double, how does that change the frontage? That would be five by ten. Or five by twenty. Anyway, so so as you're walking down the path, mm -hmm. the long and narrow, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And that would be less prairie like. I'm just make, I'm not saying this needs to uh, dismiss the idea. I'm just you know, music. How much is a traditional plot? So just a regular 600. 600. And all of them have the same closing fee? 
the same? Yeah, I hope it goes in six fifty or seven hundred on Saturday. What, what was the traditional cost? Six hundred grade. Yeah, so the prairie. So is you're paying up a, a large premium for the prairie and a small premium for the oak grove. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just have to decide if one of those is more desirable than the other. Uh, I yeah, I I, w I would think that the cemetery, the, the prairie people would want to weigh in on this and. Um, and when we look at, I mean, originally, it says we were supposed to do a, um, actually, the, the motion that we passed, we were supposed to set up an endowment. You, you argued very much and sent evidence that that's not necessary for us. But where, if we're where part, is this? There was an original, I'll, I'll show it to you, there's an original um, resolution, whether it was ever passed or not. Mm -hmm. It states the procedures and it states um, you know, endowment and the rules and things. Uh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, I'll, okay, <laughs> I, I'll bring you a copy. Um, and it says resolution is, partially, is passed in March of 2013. I couldn't find any evidence of that, but I didn't look very hard. Um, where was I going with this? Um, so if we're thinking about, you know, we, we went, I think we started off with only $100,000 this year. We, we really spent that down developing the Oak Grove. And you said, we don't, um, we don't really need an endowment because look how many plots we have and we'll be able to, we'll be able to fund this thing for centuries. Um, but then if we start, well, I think we're really going under market value. If we start putting 1500 for two burial plots in the... In the prairie, well, keep in mind. Well, yes and no. I mean, two burial plots. It has to be one family. Uh, yeah. It would not be, you know, Joe Blow and Sam, nobody, in one plot. It would be yeah. so a husband and wife could be buried together. So the single people just pay more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Way it goes. No. Well, like they don't have to be single, single. They can have a partner. They can have a all the all the other Family things that they, I, they I, can. I, I, it, yeah, but Maybe we're not going to we're not going to split it and have two deeded lots. It's going to be one or two deeded so graves. So how do you know where the other person is buried? I mean, how do you go ahead tombstone we and the records? We know where they're buried at the front and one at the back. Or? <laughs> One on this side and one on this side. Of, I mean, what, what, are we, what, are we, what are we, 10 by? 10 by 20. 10 by 20. So you have that about, sounds crazy to me that you charge. Two foot between, no. two foot between and a foot on the outside. That, that, yeah. Now, you heard the original reason was feeling that you needed that much right. area for the ambience of the prairie. And it's only now that you realize that you don't need that, that low density in order to well, the, I'm glad we have an agenda view. item to add to our cemetery committee this Tuesday. Well, this sounds I, like a discussion to be continued. Yeah, I, I'm a, yeah. You're not pushing. Oh no, no absolutely yeah, okay. not. This is just in, in general. I feel like just a, why are we going so thought. why are we going so under market when when people are looking for natural burials? I don't. I'm not trying to make profit here. I'm just saying why are we why the question is, what are you going to do with the money? Well, we're going to... This isn't a for-profit business. Pay for the mowing. And of those uh, 28 mowing. burials, uh, uh, under 10 were naturals. I, I didn't count them, but just in my head. Five or six. Five or six. So, you, you know, so people aren't lining up with it. You know, at the door to get these cheap natural barrels, but the, maybe it selects for younger people. The people, and, and yes, there are a lot of out of town people, but there are. I still think the majority of people are are local residents. But either. not just burials, but people. Like I saw even this Buying week. the plot. This the week, future. somebody I was inquiring about the plot, right? I sold the plot. Um, so when you say 28, that's 28 burials this year, not necessarily 28 plots sold. That's 28 burials in all of Glen Forest. 
Yeah, but so, the, and five to six in the natural barrel. Barrels, not and, sales. And, and it may be nothing but if you looked at sales, I know and then there was multiple, I could think of a couple who, well, that was a swapper rule in the natural barrel. There mm -hmm. have been sales with no burials in the natural burial this year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that, that never would happen to me. And people are drawn to the prairie a little more than the oak roof. I've had a couple of people who were interested in the prairie roof. They like the, the grass better than the... It's a cool idea, but they just, they're interested more in our existing active area. We've got, what, 45 left to sell in there, so there's there not a whole lot, 40 or 40 something, 40. Hmm. Um, well, I feel confident I to figure it out. that we could figure this out. Maybe not tonight, but I feel confident that there's, a, there's an answer. I'm resting on my on your laurels then. <laughs> you love to rest on I, I think <laughs> I think that we should wait for response from the committee and, okay. and move on to another subject. Sounds great. A um, roads. Unless someone else has something about cemetery. Um, roads, Dan. Okay. Well recently. Brandon got his case of a really nice snowfall, big storm. He's never had one like that. Okay. He did a real good job. Thanks for the pictures of Daniel Grove. Those were impressive. He's supposed to send one of Larkin's where we had a five foot tall snow drift walking yeah, that was what, what was that? I got an email from a resident on Houston Road that said, even four wheel drive vehicles can't get through here. Da, 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 da. Well, he must have sent that to everybody and their brother. But it made it sound like it was some kind of automatic system that was sending these out to everybody. I don't know, but, it, you know, I went out there with my snow shovel and shoveled for... <laughs> it was, it was well, Houston was never closed for... You could get through it all the way. It's just, you might have to do it in this lane. It was never... never blown out pretty good, blown out pretty good. But. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't realize it's drifting that's the problem. Oh, it was the problem. Again, it just, yeah, you open them up and two hours later you close it again, so it was pretty good. You had a few things you wanted to talk to him about? Oh, um, well, the, my big discussion was the mud flap, but <laughs> it's, already been, it's already been gone around, so. You want to keep it? We have it. Would you like to keep it as a souvenir? Did you pull it out? Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that story? No. No, there's a pothole that's on Tobias Road. And um, it's been there for a, a few days anyway. I mean, we didn't jump right on it. There were other things to but do. But it appeared, a, a newly paid yeah, road, brand, this, brand, this pothole, brand 16 brand. by 24 yeah. inches appeared. Yeah, nice rectangle. Yeah. Nice yeah, beautiful rectangular pothole. Ha -ha. So Dan already knows this, and Marilyn already knows this, but I didn't know it. I was out looking at roads the other day, and I went down Tobias Road, and I knew the pothole, and I drove by, and I said, mm, that's a pothole. So I drove to the end of the road, turned around to come back, and some guy comes running out, he comes coming out of his drive, and flags me down. And I go, he says, uh, have you seen that pothole up the end of the... I said, yeah. I said, that's, that's a heck of a little pothole. I said, we're going to get to it as quick as we can. He says, have you seen what's in that pothole? I said, no. He says, well, go up there and take a look. He says, you'll be surprised. <laughs> so I went up there, and I looked down that pothole, and it's a mud flap <laughs> off of a truck or off of something. It's just lying there on the old road, and it used to have two inches of blacktop on it, but that didn't stick to it, so it all popped up. It was a mud flap off the dump truck. Probably pulled it off when he backed up to the paver. Yeah. Because it, it happened, yeah. and, and they probably didn't see yeah, it. I thought they were trying to save asphalt, and we should build them. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I, I thought that was. I thought that was fine. So anyway, that was my road condition. Oh, um, cute. Did you take a picture? Yeah. Yeah, there's a picture in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a hard copy. I don't know what that was. Uh, yeah. That's I was like, what is that in there? You look down at the corner, you can I, see. I know. Yeah, I could see it, but I thought that's odd. Uh, the the only other thing is, well, there's there's two real quick, but the other was, uh, would you get a, a price to run a trench drain from? Side to side in front of the Quonset hut, get rid of that water. Put it, put it in the ditch, or do something with I it. Tie it into the pipe that's in the ditch on Bruce's side. Yeah, whichever side is better to, for it to go, because that, that's all of that. That's a pain in the butt. Yeah. 
I know it's the whole thing. Well, everything's higher than the yeah. So I know. It settles there, and I've, I've tried to scrape the little groove, and, and sometimes it works. But, uh, yeah. So you want the kind that's open where. Uh, yeah. You, th you think that's good? I mean. Yeah, it has to be pretty substantial. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what that's what came came to mind. Okay. The only other thing, and this is, it, it's it's not it's not personal. It's it's business, as they say. But I want to remind you that when we get calls to our Glenfor Cemetery website about you know, for information, for immediate assistance, for any of those things, what it says on there. That's your phone number, and so they're calling you, and we need as best you can, I'm not saying you gotta stop plowing the road or, or anything, but when you can when you can get back to making this call back to somebody, you know, they're in distress. You know, they've either just lost somebody or they're just trying to bury somebody. You know, and so they like they don't want to sit around for the rest of the day and wait for a phone call from us if possible. You know what I mean? I mean I know you remember your mailbox was full last week or whenever that was. Uh, well then mm -hmm. obviously yeah. I mean hopefully not too many people were trying to call you to to set up you know. Uh, but just you know just keep that in mind that you know prioritize those calls as they come in and and, and check obviously check your check your messages. Or your call your message call would be yeah please yes, yeah, I appreciate that that's all I had chair Don anything with for roads no you guys in the auto the Department of Transportation mileage certification yeah we need to figure that out we have it till March first oh you know, geez, to the lady who sent said can you do this at your next meeting we were, oh it's not an emergency but yeah it does so I just. Um, it out we, yeah, we had a question of whether the so to the, whether we actually have 14.2 whatever miles of road now. Did our last certification did that include yeah. Spillane Road being taken off? Uh, the uh, one it, it was not taken off, but then it it's off. It's, it is off it's now. Not listed. Spillane's not listed. Okay, so this I this think that's correct. Probably is correct. Okay, so because Spillane wasn't much as. Yeah, I know. It didn't change just a whole lot. It's, yeah. it's only 700 feet. Or something. Yeah. What do we need to do with that then? Is just they have a motion or yeah. have a resolution? Yeah, yeah. If you want to see it. Should we I mean, I, move for it? We can just. Yes. Okay. Could I look at that? Yeah. It's, it's something we do every year. Mm -hmm. We're just certifying how many. How many yeah. Roads, how many roads we have? How many? How many, how many miles we have? Okay. Can I do do the darn thing. Let's. Um. Total certified mileage in, why does it say 2021? Oh, at the end of calendar 21 was, in Township and Green County, was 14.487 miles. As certified by the Board Township Trustees or reported to the Director of Transportation in accordance with provision, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, the undersigned, hereby certify that as of December 31st, 2000. 22, okay, the township was responsible for maintaining 14.487 miles of public roads. I so move. Second. Discussion? No. May we vote, please? I'm not sure what this <laughs> I mean. We got her. Moved, it, moved and seconded. Oh, got road certification, mileage? Mileage yeah. certification. Mileage, mileage yeah. certification. Yeah. Yeah, we can give her that copy. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Trustee Mutter. Uh, yes. Trustee Hollister. Yes. Trustee Moyer. And then shall I send that to them or will you? Yeah, or I can, or whatever. Yeah. I think it has to be signed and yeah, just okay. filled out a little bit. All right. We can make a copy of it. Okay. Fiscal officer, get ready to roll. We have five resolutions. Fiscal mm -hmm. officer's report. Mm -hmm. Well, as we do at the beginning of every year, we authorize temporary appropriations. So. Um, I'll read it for you. Um, it's resolution 2023-01 be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of said sums Board of Trustees during the fiscal year ending December, oops, December 31st, 2023, the attached sums be in the same are hereby set aside temporarily and appropriated for several purposes for which expenditures are to be made for and during said fiscal year. Now, therefore, the Miami Township Trustees approve these temporary appropriations to direct the fiscal officer to submit them to the sums, these sums to the county auditor. Do 
and we have a motion. I shall okay. move. A second. Any discussion? No. No. Hearing none, may we vote? Uh, resolution 2023-01, authorized temporary appropriations. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Winter? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Motion carried. Next is, um, these are just all um, annual things, uh, the pay schedule, whereas it is the intent of the township to authorize the annual pay schedule of the Board of Trustees and the Fiscal Officer, and whereas a maximum annual salary is determined by the State of Ohio's revised code, now therefore the annual salary of the Trustees and the Fiscal Officer is not to exceed the maximum allowable amount set by the State and is payable on a monthly basis commencing January 1, 2023. We have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. May we vote, please? Move and second in resolution 2023-02, phase schedule <coughs> for the township, uh, Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Meyer? Yes. Motion carried. Um, next is uh, resolution 2023-03, and this is something I kind of stumbled upon when I was going through all of our other resolutions. And um, hasn't been done in quite a while, but I thought, what the heck, let's, let's tighten it up. So it's uh, called the establishment, Establishing U.S. Bank as our depository. Whereas it is required by the Ohio Revised Code to establish a banking institution as the official depository every five years. And whereas uh, you know, U.S. Bank, Yellow Springs, has been the depository for Miami Township for many years, now therefore the Miami Township <laughs> Board of Trustees establishes U.S. Bank as its public depository commencing January 1, 2023 and expiring December 31st, 2027. Do we have a motion? I so move. Second. Any discussion? May we vote, please? Move and second in resolution 2023 3 establishing U.S. Bank as depository from 2023 through 2027 as enumerated. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. This next resolution was. Um, recommended by the most recent audit and um, it's a uh, obviously very simple just as a um, procedural thing that we haven't done before <laughs> it's resolution 2023-04 establish the maximum amount for blanket purchase orders be resolved by that the board of trustee Miami Township trustees is wishes to establish the maximum amount for blanket purchase orders at one hundred fifty thousand dollars May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? May we vote, please? So moved and seconded resolution 2023-04 to establish maximum amount for bank purchase orders as enumerated. Trustee Muncher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moyer? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. And then, um, so once I establish the temporary appropriations um, and get them into the system so that I can cut blanket certificates for all the appropriations that I made and then start paying the bills, you, know, you come across, um, this happens pretty much every year at the beginning of the year as well, then you come across, whoops, I didn't put enough money in that fund or I didn't even put any money in that one, just trying to get through all that anyway. So that now we're amending some of the temporary appropriations. <laughs> this is resolution 2023-05. Whereas it's an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendments to the following temporary appropriations. In the general fund, I increased um, oh, 1,000, 110, 599, which is other, increased it by $500. The fire fund um, increased contracted services by 1,000. Uh, and also in the fire fund, 2191, um, 2020-599, which is also an other, um, a, um, appropriation increased by a thousand and in 21 91 767 20 buildings increased that by five hundred dollars in EMS billing I um it's 2281 230-360 contracted services I increased that by one thousand five hundred dollars the Miami County of Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately if she hasn't already do we have a motion uh, I'll make that motion I'll second any discussion? I know. Um, Ask. 
Nellie. Yeah, maybe I'll just, we'll, we'll prove this because this be done and then ask. Um, vote, please. Moved and seconded, resolution 2023-05, authorizing amendment to the temporary appropriations as enumerated. Trustee Hutcher? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Hoyer? Yes. Motion carried. So we're amending the temporary appropriations. And the, the temporary appropriations will be paid with the $1,000 that we moved. The 100000 The 100000 yeah. Uh, well, that was in one fund, um, but okay. see, like, um, for example, in the general fund, the um, other fund, right, I had put money in it, and then, or I, I actually, I think I accidentally missed that one as I'm going through all, you know, you go through the list and you're adding, you know, anyway, I accidentally skipped that one, so I had to put some money in there because I had an other expenditure, and then, um, I also, and then in the fire fund and in EMS billing, I had not put any money in contractor services when I was creating the temporary appropriations because I thought, well, that's for like a bigger, you know, contractor services, a bigger chunk of money, and we'll just hold off before we put any money in there because I'm trying to be very conservative right now in the fire fund and EMS. So I didn't, so I hadn't even put any money in there. Then lo and behold, Colin hands me some bills and I needed to, I needed some money in there. So you put, that's after you already have, I can't even get started in paying bills until you establish your appropriations. Although that's the first thing you do in the system. You gotta put a dollar amount in each appropriation. Anyway, and so then, so then, 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 you know, and then, um, and, and again, in, in the fire fund and the other, it was just a matter of, I had put some money in there, but there wasn't enough money to cover the expenses that would fall under that appropriation. So I had to then amend the temporary appropriations in order to pay this week's bills. Does that help you? It does. Um, I don't know if it's important for a meeting, but so unless we do something, we'll start collecting our next year's taxes in March. So, and will we? Do we need to? Um, the, David Graham had told us that if we pass the resolution authorizing our fiscal officers to seek advance of our tax settlement. Um, that could start sooner. Is that something we? Yeah, we we, we well we could do it the, the next meeting. We can uh, you know pass that resolution. Yeah. So I did talk to him because I was trying to get you know get some clarification on how to even get through to the payroll that we had at the end of December, and so um, he said you know he he know he understands that we are in kind of a crisis situation, and that it's not customary to to um, you know give us an advance on what we're going to expecting in the end of March. Whenever earlier, whenever the first collection is, you know, whenever we get our first settlement, but he's willing to do it. So it's a matter of passing the resolution, which we can do at the next meeting, and then I can call him, and um, he will. He, he he said he would help us. So you're fighting against here that we do that next meeting. Yeah, okay. yeah, and um, you have enough money to make payroll for fire and EMS next meeting. Yeah, well, and what you know, Chris, and and you did suggest this, and I'm I'm gonna definitely be looking at that at the next payroll because it's just so expensive. Um, that um, since there seems to be some more ex kind of flush money in the EMS billing fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that I, um, um, I did, if you might, if you notice in the, uh, pro in the uh, temporary appropriations that um, I created, I did put a chunk of change in that, that particular salary line item in the EMS billing. And what I'll have to do is, you know, you have to make the adjustments in, in the, each person's, um, the wage report, you know, I have to go back to each, each person's, their wages, because that, that's where you tell the system where to get the money from. So I'm going to have to do some maneuver in there, <laughs> which is not, it's not a crime or anything. You know I mean? I just have to, <laughs> I just have to, you know, set it up so that, that so that when I it put the, the um, when I enter the wages into the system, it takes it from EMS instead of just 2191. Does that make any sense yes. to you guys? I'm going to try, yeah, I'm going to try and spend some of the salary, pay some of the salaries out of EMS. Instead of primarily, it's all coming out of 2191. But for now, that's my plan. That's, that's where the, some money is, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and we didn't get a fund status this week because we're all into Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't, I didn't. Well, I can print one out for you easily, well, but. No, yeah, no, but. Doesn't have to be tonight. Hmm? Doesn't have to be tonight. Mm -hmm. No, no, but yeah, I, I, I meant to do that, honestly. Or, and, I didn't know if it was because we were in temporary. No, so. no, you know, you can see what you know. You, you know, it's really, it's really just twenty one ninety one that that it is yeah. the fund that is um struggling. Yeah. The road, the gas, everything else is. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay. Fairly hunky dory. Well, in general's down to what, forty-three thousand or something? <laughs> well, yeah, fairly, but you know, like but, I, but you know, but the general fund lends some money to the fire fund, and they'll get a, they'll get it back. Well, we had the, the auditor recommended that we transfer the money from the sale of um, the firehouse, although. Did we ever tell the auditor we paid the additional three hundred fifty thousand dollars for the dirt on here um, out of the general fund? Um, what the dirt? Yeah, the dirt that this building's sitting on. The fill. We paid three hundred fifty thousand dollars to Wright State out of the general fund, um, and we never were reimbursed for that. I don't. That, that's thanks for telling me that now. <laughs> what, <laughs> no, but he no, but the, he was he was talking the uh, the audit that we just had the state auditor's office felt that even though it felt that this, the money, that the revenues that were generated from the sale of the, the old fire station were, should, be in the, um, should be in the fire fund, it should have gone back to the fire fund. Whereas I sent them a copy of the minutes from 1954 that said that the trustees agreed to pass a levy to raise the money to buy land and build a fire station. So it was the trustees, a levy that was issued by the trustees to generate the funds to build the fire station back in 1954 and buy that piece of land where it was. But I thought that, that legitimized that it should come back to the general fund because it was issued by the trustees, but they said no. So that was $383,000 that we had, that I had put in the general fund had to go back to the fire fund. And then the additional hundred thousand. Well, we 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 right. We that, that's a loan. Hundred thousand, and how did how did, and and this <laughs> three hundred or whatever thousand, mm -hmm. it just did because it, uh, the auditor told us to. It didn't. Mm -hmm. We he didn't have to vote on that or anything. No. No, that's and, what they told. Um, I mean, I. And I, so what's confusing to me if we just transferred three hundred thousand into the fire fund, why why are we having trouble at all? It didn't actually go to the fire fund, it went into their capital, what was it? Yeah, you know, capital projects. Them? Okay. But it was already... Yeah, okay, this they is, don't need This that. is a lot of, you know, yeah. this is yeah. auditor... Yes. But that will end up paying for the ambulance. We'll use that money eventually. <laughs> well, but it, yeah, it, yeah, it, was, reduced, it was reduced, it was reduced by 100... Today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was reduced by 117,000 because of... Wow. Anyway, okay, cool. Why was it reduced by 117,000? Yeah, did you not notice that the capital fund had a negative balance of 115 or 117,000? No. Okay, well, we can talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, I guess you only went so far down on the fund status report. <laughs> you stopped at the negative one down there. I predict that by this time next year, we're going to be, we're gonna be clean report. as a whistle. No, I mean throughout the, throughout the past year, hmm. from the last audit. Anyway. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anything else for our fiscal officer? Don? No. Nope. All right, Mr. Zoning Inspector. Um, I, I've seen you relatively recently. I did issue one permit for a minor addition on a, on a home. Uh, but the important things are, I have my annual report for 2022, and I'll go over that quickly. You all have copies. By the way, I have no idea why I got my graphs all perfect. They looked just like I wanted them to look <laughs> in the computer. And then they printed like they were negatives. And I don't know yeah, why, but I think you can still figure out what's going okay. on now. Those are, those are decades? The, 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 those are years under each of the bars. And so the relative number of new homes well, there were two so new homes last year. you told us the year. first year and the last, we could, we could extrapolate. Yeah, there's 20 years along there in 2022. Um, okay. I will try to redo this, but I was surprised and didn't have time to try to figure out what went, went wrong. What's anyway. The, what's the bottom graph? The bottom well, is the number of new homes. homes. The top one is how much money was spent by people getting zoning permits. So I issued 17 permits. That's... Uh, one less than last year for a total build, building value of $1,626,000 and permit fees of $973. These permits represent two new homes, five residential additions, a building move, literally picking up a building and moving it to another location, an agricultural building, no value or fee, and seven accessory structures. 
three storage buildings, one pool, two workspaces and one garage. This is something that's a little bit new. People are creating offices mm -hmm. for, to work with, you know, in, in accessory structures. Um, permits in the Yellow Springs School District portion of the township were valued at 402,000. Um, in the Cedar Cliff School District, they were valued at 1,224,000. That's because the new houses are in that part of the township. Those were the two on Kyle? Yeah. yeah. I think they were both on Kyle. I don't, I don't have the details with me. Um, I only half, issued one two half built on Kyle now, so I'm guessing. I issued one permit to work along Township Road, so there was, there was less of that going on. Um, continued working with the Zoning Commission to revise the Zoning Code to reflect the comprehensive plan. The revision of the section on plan unit development was completed. The floodplain overlay district has been rewritten with updates and section 18.5 is being reviewed. I also advised the Commission of relevant zoning issues that came before me. Uh, as usual, a steady amount of work is given to answering questions about zoning in Miami Township. Um, Today, there are more questions from people that are buying land and want to know what they can do, and there less used to be, it was always people like the appraisers wanting to, to get information. It changes a little bit, but I still get those calls on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Work with regional planning continues to add insights in the zoning process and, and has provided some training. Um, that was something new. They had a, a program this year. Uh, one of my zoning commission members took advantage of that, and I attended a couple of, of those meetings. Uh, but we've had fewer meetings of just having the zoning inspectors all get together. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals continue to be active. Um, only one full-fledged uh, meeting this past year, but then they've also started working on developing bylaws. Yeah. Um, the last okay. thing I put in is greater interest in using the township land for purposes other than agriculture have added new challenges to, administ to administering zoning. Issues range from agritourism to solar arrays to various kinds of events. So that's the, 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 the um, overview of 2022. Could you give me the y-axis? Like, okay, the, the first graph um, permit fees and those bars are um, $500,000 increments. So this la the last bar, the one all the way over to the right, represents the $1,626,000. So that, 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 um, it's a number we collect. I don't know if it's all that relevant yeah. to what's going on in the world. It sort of tells you that if you look, if you compare it to the graph below, you're seeing that we're building fewer houses and spending more money. It talks to inflation, but not a whole lot more than that. The, the lower one, the number of new homes, has always been one of those things that, that points out that there's no predicting how many houses are going to be built in the township in any given year. So is this going up by ones? It, it, no, it went down by three. No, is it, are, are we, are we graph going? Yeah, the graph is, the bars are two homes. Two. Two, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah. Okay. And as I say, I'll try to get another copy of this printed out. Okay. That makes Make all it that clear. Now that and then on the flip side, saving paper, um, I looked over the zoning keys. I had mentioned last year after having multiple BZA hearings that, that incurred all kinds of, of extra time and effort and actual cash outlay, that maybe we should revise those fees. And what's more, I looked at, at how our, our fee structure was done, and, and they really didn't break it down into all the different kinds of hearings that the Board of Zoning Appeals does. Okay? So I did break them down and administrative review, determination of similar uses, and boundary locations, I've left at $100. Now, um, is, is, is this, I'm sorry, I don't have the book in front of me. Sure. Is this new? This is the... No, the administrative review, determination of no, similar no, uses. No, all of these are the, the, there are six different categories mm -hmm. of hearings that you can, or the issues you can come to the BZA for. Mm -hmm. 
So you can come for the administrative review, determine similar uses, boundary locations. All right, what's the cost now for that? It's 100. I left, I left oh, okay. that book the same way it is. All right, got it. Conditional uses and, and variances, they had a, a specific price for conditional uses. They didn't have a, a, a specific price for, I mean, all of these did, they just had conditional uses and, and everything else, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. okay? And so conditional uses um, are more involved. There's, there's a lot more uh, research and work that has to be done if one of those comes along. We haven't had any for a while. Mm -hmm. And variances in the same way um, just, just take more preparation, both on, on my part and, and work for the BZA. And then temporary exemptions, which we've only had over the last three years, um, are more involved because they require not only having the hearing and, 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 and making the determination, but they also take monitoring because they're temporary. You have to see that the work is done the way that it's, it's supposed to be done. Whereas a variance, the event issues is only permitted, it's just part of the regular process. So that's why I put a two hundred dollar fee on that one. Is it the same as temporary use, temporary exemptions? Temporary exemptions. How much was it? It, it had no specific fee associated with okay. it in the past. And so how much it was been hundred. Everything was a hundred dollars, oh. except conditional uses. And how, and how much was that in the past? Conditional yeah. uses. How much was that? Conditional uses were one fifty. So I didn't change them. I just lumped variances in with them under that hundred and fifty. I oh, gotcha. It's, again, it's temporary exemptions, the temporary use clause we're talking about? Yes. The, the, the actual term for that section is our temporary exemptions. So that went up by 100, but that doubled in price. But, but, uh, yeah, double. You can say it doubled. Okay. Then, and this is something that, that I think may take more discussion. I can, I can, you know, these, the fees that we charge are always somewhat arbitrary. We don't have a basic philosophy on how to, to do our fees. Mm -hmm. And I, in terms of, of my personal comfort or whatever, I'm happy with, with most of our fees. But I said on, on BZA hearings that any applicant may be asked to sign an agreement to pay for expenses deemed necessary by the trustees above the costs of administering Section 18.3 which is basically what you have to do to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. the, the notification in the newspaper, the notification of adjacent uh, property owners, the, the putting together the, the Board of Zoning Appeals, that regular work that we're all fairly familiar with. Mm -hmm. Such expenses may include, but are not limited to, attorney fees, recordings of hearings, and a cost associating with accommodating large numbers of participants. Um, so the question is, do we want to create that option and, and exercise it as, as we see as appropriate or, or ask any applicant for services of the BZA to, to make that agreement? Because we have had um, costs that we've never had in the past recently. We've, we've, had, and we've had all of those things that I've listed, attorney fees and, and and re having the special recording of the, of the hearings. Um, you know, is it simply accommodating that this room is full of people, we have to have a parking attendant outside. What is 18.3, what, that wasn't, that is that's, the all right, that's, that's, that's the part of the BCA section of code that tells you what you have to do to have a public okay. hearing. So that would apply to not just like temporary use, it might it apply applies to, to all of these. Like a public hearing. Like agritourism public yeah. hearing? Yeah, okay. you, have to, you have to advertise it appropriately. You have to notify adjacent property owners appropriately. You have to schedule a meeting. Uh, if we're interested in considering uh, what I would call flexible expense uh, agreement, uh, I think we should get legal advice before we spend a lot of time thinking about it. That is, is this allowed? Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense to me that if we're going to have more expenses, somebody needs, it needs to be consideration. 
but it may not be considered fair. I, I, I just. Mm -hmm. Well, I can I can run this yeah. past Jen Hilbert if you like, right. or you can do it. I mean, in in a sense, and I'm not quibbling about this. It's the trustees' responsibility to set these sure. rates, sure. but I'm the person that's most familiar with what's going on, so I'm making a recommendation to you. Well, I would think that we not do anything tonight, and maybe revisit this when you're with us again. Okay. Does that sound? You could ask Jen in the meantime. Yeah, well, you want me to do that? Or do you? No, no, I'll, I'll ask. Yeah. Okay. I've established communication. Sure, I guess. So <laughs> it's my idea. Well, yeah, okay. But as he said, it's our responsibility. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Chair. I mean, do it however you want to. Okay. Well, we'll find out. As, yeah. as Don say, is, is that a, an appropriate um, system? Yeah. See, okay, let me just, a, a footnote or whatever. The, I've always felt strongly that if someone, you know, wants to get a, a variance, it shouldn't be something that only the wealthy can ask for. Mm -hmm. That the fee shouldn't be so high. On the other hand, if, if you come into a hearing bringing your attorney, which almost triggers us bringing our attorney, right. then you're creating an additional expense. Yeah. It's your yeah. choice. You don't have to bring an attorney. Yeah. And so that's why I can see doing this this kind of agreement. Mm -hmm. I, I agree 100 percent. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it's clear to everybody yeah. why why we wouldn't just say, oh let's just raise our fees for BDA here. Yeah. And for this temporary use we, we've never had one specifically for temporary use before, is that what you're saying? Or we didn't have a separate fee it, for that. It was the same as conditional. Yeah. And you think that one should be fifty dollars higher because it's usually more involved? Yes. Well, it, 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 it see what happens for example, when you have a temporary use, then well, let, let's use what we've had, okay? With the performances, strictly speaking, I have to see if they're following what they said they were going to do. Now, I I haven't felt the need to you know to to fuss too much about that. I much rather trust people, but nevertheless. You know, if someone comes in and gets a, a variance to build a house, unless, you know, the same as any other house, they build it totally in the wrong place, you, you assume that once they got the variance, they're going to yeah. put it where they said they're going to put it, yeah. and you don't have to worry about it. Um, but, uh, and in the same way, but there's, you know, you decide that you're, you know, you're going to do events and you say you're only going to have this many, well, there's somebody out there counting to make sure you did it right, or mm -hmm. nobody's worrying about it. Right. So there's just, it, the open-ended uh, part of it makes it a little bit more complicated mm -hmm. from an administrative standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything else for the Well, it's, you... I have a quick question for yeah. someone before we move, mm -hmm. if, if that's okay. Yeah, it, that's what I was going to ask, because I, I remember you did, did have something. Um, Richard, our last meeting, you, you talked about getting an opinion on uh, on 1815 for the temporary use. Right. Uh, did you yes. either get anything I, from the I have that. I have it. Jen, I sent that information to Jen Hoover, who responded really promptly, mm -hmm. I mean, within a few days, mm -hmm. and, and, and thoroughly from, I mean, these were questions from the Zoning Commission, and I have forwarded that material to them, but I, I was, was, uh, favorably, favorably impressed mm -hmm. with what we received. Um, I guess okay, I don't need to know yeah. the specifics. I just want to know whether you were no, making progress. No, I did. I that. followed through on that and, uh -huh. and got results. Great. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear that, and I'm happy to hear that that uh, Rochus, uh, Johnson, and Briggs are doing a good job for us. Yeah, no. Um, you had a question about the January 17th meeting. I did. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have an agenda? Do you have any idea what is going to go on? And that's uh, a regular zoning commission meeting? It's a regular zoning commission meeting. It is their annual meeting. So they will be reviewing what they did for the past year and, and what they are planning on doing in, in the coming year. Um, and I... I don't have yet the minutes from that meeting, but that 
there, there, there was that question from, I think, one of the BZA members. Well, what, what's supposed to happen at this meeting? Mm -hmm. and, and it's, I think, it's hard for me to speak for the Zoning Commission exactly, that they want to introduce themselves, just that they exist, you know, as, same as the rest of these bodies. There is no interaction, generally speaking. I mean, you all have met the Zoning Commission because they found it uh, expeditious to talk with you about zoning amendments rather than just delivering them. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, unless you've attended a BZA hearing, you'll, ne you'll never see the BZA members, and, and most of the time you won't see the Zoning Commission members. And certainly the BZA and the Zoning Commission never overlap. But they do need to understand what each other are doing. Because there, there is a, you know, as has been pointed out, if the Zoning Commission writes uh, code that the, that the BZA constantly changes, then there's something wrong going on. You know, there needs to be an understanding between the two groups. Now, I don't, there isn't a specific example of that that's, that's triggered this. this the, the Zoning Commission just said, we'd like to know these people. We'd like to introduce them to what we do. Is this meeting at 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. But it's, there is no particular topic to be discussed. Where is it going to be? Here. Okay. And it's public meeting just because they're all public. Doesn't have yeah. to be announced other than it's... Well, I, 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 I think I will put an, an, an announcement in the newspaper kind of like the village does, just saying there's going to be a meeting of of this, this, or this, just so that there isn't any issue about it. But it's not for the trustees or the or the board of zoning appeals to conduct any business. Right. Okay. But you all will be in the same place at the same time. Chris, so I may have time. something I wrote to send to the BZA members, and I probably should have sent it to the township too about that idea of an agenda, because. I, the, but that wasn't until after the, the zoning commission met in December. Mm -hmm. that was but I will check on agenda to trustees. Okay. Okay. Um, new business. Oh, look at that January seventh joint meeting of board of trustees. Maybe we can cross that off. Yes. Yeah. Old business. Last but not least. Um, restriction of industrial solar in the township. Um, I guess this is just a discussion, quickly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not rushing anybody, but that's what we do. We want to think well, I was not here for the November 7 meeting, uh, which people spoke to my earlier uh, advocacy that we go to the county commission and request. Uh, that they use their power under Senate Bill 52 uh, to ban uh, utility scale solar uh, in our township. Um, and I'm still in favor, of, I'm still planning to bring a motion in that direction. Uh, but spirit of that meeting is very much around let's, you know, sort of local control, local collaboration. Uh, so you watch the Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and my approach just to the Kingwood proposal was, you know, we have local control, we have local zoning, and this doesn't fit. And uh, the state law is uh, hijacked. What you know would, would have? I don't know how much process there really would have been, but you can ask for variances and conditional uses or whatever. Um, I I think that uh, I'm going to be advocating that we ask county commission to 
um, you know, ban uh, utility scale solar in Miami Township from the point of view that we are reviewing our zoning. And we will have, that is, it's been 10 years since major township plan, uh, and let's, let's review. Uh, and this gives us space, gives us, uh, this protects us from what I call kind of a hijacking. Well, the hijacking is just the fact that utilities get a special pet. Like, right. I mean, it wasn't specifically hijacking solar. It's like utilities always. If That's they, right. That's I right. mean, uh, that I would. I, I would argue that we should be able to. You know, if there was a, a coal, uh, a coal generating plant coming in, we should be able to apply local zoning. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't an SB 52 for coal mine or coal generators. Uh, so it's still pending, but I don't have that did you, um, motion here. Did you have a chance to review? I just want to point out because you weren't here. Around that date, there are so many emails we've got with uh, lots of really good. I've got only seen five of those emails. Yeah, there's. There were, Actually, I anyway, I look so at the solar phone. You probably have printed copies. Oh, yeah, of that. I like everybody justified, and I have all the. I don't have a lot of the links. I have, that people I have. Said, but I, I can make copies of you for you. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to reason this out. Can I throw my two cents in? Just oh, for please. Fun? And, <laughs> and I have, and I have a couple cents when you, you're done if you don't cover it. Um. I don't disagree with you, Don. I might disagree with the, 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 the direction that it goes, and, and this is really only as a result of SB 52. Forever, I've always been what I hope to think of as the strongest advocate of an independent township government, a uh, governing body, you know, to do the work that we do. And I've always had the I guess the little brother mentality of the county. You know, the county tells us what we can spend. The county tells us what roads we can have. The county tells us how much this, that, and the other thing. And especially annexation. The county, by the stroke of their pen, takes a thousand acres of township land and gives it to the village of Yellow Springs. The county, the county, the county. This seems to be just another one of those. We're giving our authority over to the county to restrict you know, uh, so with the passage of SB 52, in my opinion, we can leave things just the way they are, we can work on our plans, we can do all the things that townships are supposed to do, but we also have the authority that within 90 days of any time, any applicant goes to the power siding board and applies to, to put a utility solar on any square inch of dirt in Miami Township, if we choose, we can request, we can go through the procedure and request the county to restrict the utility zoning in, in the area that they're talking about. That's our authority. I'd like to keep it our authority and not give it to them. I was not aware of that um, provision they, they in 52. I actually made a copy of those. Um, this side tells you um, about the 90 days you're talking about. And um, this, the thing I underlined here, and it might be too late tonight, maybe we should read it and come back. That, that thing in the back concerned me. So I well, it. Um, okay. because. I'm not saying we do anything tonight. Yeah. I'm just bringing, since I haven't been here for yeah. two months, uh, I'm restating my position. And, and what you're saying about the 90 days is I was completely unaware of. Hmm. Well, that's what it says here. Um, this is this sounds great. Um, the applicant, if, it, if a developer wants to apply, they have between 90 and 300 days before submitting before submitting their application. Um, they have to hold a meeting in every county in which the facility be located. They must notify all impacted boards and county commissions and township trustees. 
and they must tell the type of facility and capacity and all that. So that sounds good, like at least 90 days and maybe 300. And assuming they're not going to tell us the day before, we're getting a little more than 90 days, right? Mm -hmm. So um, within the 90 days of the public meeting, the Board of County Commissioners may adopt a resolution that prohibits the construction of the proposed facility or limits the boundaries of the facility. Um, and if no re resolution is adopted, the application may proceed as filed. So we're not really taking our, our power back because they still have the power to do that. Oh, yeah. But, um, but that's, all, that's only with our request. We would have to request them. No, they could do that's it on their own. Well, they could do it on their own, their own, but their own. I don't think. And then, and then I said, okay, so we'll have 90 days. We could do it. Jeff told us if you want to get a restriction, give yourself about a month and a half or two, two months to get it done. And that's less than 90 days. Who's um, The Cedarville Township Trustee. Oh, Jeff, Jeff ooh, mm -hmm. sorry. Okay. And, but then I read this part. Um, Oh, did I put the same thing on? Oh, I got the same thing on the back. No, I didn't. Um, no, I didn't. So a restricted area resolution may, must include a map. If, if we're going to do a resolution that restricts areas, we need yeah. a map and text. So I guess that's not rocket science, but it's another step. At least 30 days prior to the meeting, blah, blah, blah. you got to give 30 days notice, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But then this part troubled me. The adoption of a resolution creating a res restricted area, that's if we did that, shall not affect the construction of a utility facility that was already presented to the Board of County Commissioners. Keep reading. If the Board did not, if the Board did not adopt a resolution prohibiting the facility. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see that. How are you reading that? The adoption of a resolution, what do we do? Will not affect the construction of the facility that was already presented to them. A facility that was already presented to board of trustees. If if the board did not mm -hmm. adopt a resolution, I think this is the kind of back and forth that not back and forth processing that we don't need to do in a meeting. Okay. This is something to you know ask the prosecutor or. The, um, Furman, Columbus. I just, I was just making sure because I, I love when you told me last week that we had 90 days to do something, mm -hmm. and we. This could, sounds you like and I, completely different law than, than the SB 52 that I read. This is I'll have I to look Ohio's, again. Ohio State summary of it, but um, but it, it on there it does tell you the part of the law that you could look it up specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, just. I'll stop now, but okay, if you I didn't you realize that, you're reading a summary, not the law itself. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just, I, I like to think that what you're saying is true. I would love if that was true. Okay, so we'll, read that, we'll, and, 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 and we'll, maybe we could convince ourselves that that's true. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. Okay. But, Sussed out. But what I'm thinking is that, um, well, the danger of not acting. The danger of not acting, although I, I'd like to have more time because even the, the climate sustainability people group I'm, I represent us on, they're asking a lot of these questions and they want more information. Um, the, the danger is that King would, or would regroup and propose another project up on that end of the township. Maybe submit another application. And if that goes through, we're in another legal bit. We, we, we couldn't afford to sit down and not be an intervener, I don't think. Well, we would just, at that point, if we wanted to, we would go through the procedure and, and ask the county, you know, we're back to the county commission, to ask them to put a restricted zone designation yeah. on whatever piece of property that is. So I'll do my best. To find we, we out. Would, it would never get to intervener, it would never get to the power siding board because it would not go any further if they put the restricted uh, designation on it. I'll do my best to find out if that's 
if that is actually, we'd be able to do that. Okay. I, I called Dick Gould and he, he didn't know. Okay, cool. Um, old business. Don, are you ha happy with that? That we're, what, what do we want to say? We're going to continue to educate ourselves and. I will reread Senate Bill 52 uh, and uh, my, my biggest concern is that we not be in a position where the power siding board decides instead of us. And here's an option uh, where we can uh, take them out of it. And have our, almost have our constituents would entertain a large group. But it, it's an issue, a local zoning issue. Uh, you know, solar at five acres, solar at ten acres, only agrivoltaic solar where you have agriculture or pasture or something underneath it. Um, it it's a whole new, you know, it's like saying, are we going to have a residential with 300 mm -hmm. feet of frontage on a, on a road and three acres? Uh, are we going to have uh, a new chip manufacturing factory that takes 2,000 acres? Uh, you know, what are we allowing? And we should decide, we, not the trustees, but the township should decide. And our township has some diversity of views on that. That truly, that diversity I mean, about our deciding or what? The, the diversity, diversity of being, well, some don't want us to be a roadblock to um, our children. And we also need more houses. always going to be a variety. <laughs> we need more houses, houses. we need more houses. factories. You know. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think we have them? time to to, um, to educate. I think we have time to educate ourselves. In fact, I plan to, um, not tonight. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, no, my God. Everybody just the periods. Um, I was thinking mostly uh, how the world is going to be so late. I plan to be in some people plan to visit some of these sites and get just look. One one's being one one is being um what you could installed now, I forget the name of it, and get a get a ringside seat of I would like to witness the digging of oh my gosh, this the posts. Here? How hard would it be to take them back out of here? <sighs> Now I put away my agenda where it tells me how to close motion. this meeting. Call I call for motion that it is going to be adjourned. <laughs> so moved. A second. And then you, I was adjourned by acclamation. And we are adjourned by acclamation. Thank you.